Hello friends, welcome to another vlog. I have a little bit of technical difficulties with either my camera, my SD card, or I just cannot figure this one issue out in Final Cut Pro. And I do see a lot of vlogs out there, some of my favorite vlogs, where it's strictly just music and voiceover. So we are going to try that today. Let me know down in the comments how you guys like this format of video. But I wanted to combine a little bit of my vlogging videos with my food videos just to see maybe if you guys like it better if everything is integrated into one video instead of having to hop into separate food versus style versus vlog playlists. So this vlog is focusing all about the transition into fall. So as you can see, I picked up some of the mini gourds from Trader Joe's and just dotted those around the house or the apartment, I should say. And we are going to be cooking up some apple recipes. So the first one is this really delicious apple and cheddar grilled cheese. If you notice on the outside of each slice of sourdough, I spread a little bit of mayo, which is my favorite way to get that golden brown crust. You could use butter obviously, but I've been loving using QB mayo. You're gonna cook your grilled cheese in the air fryer for 10 minutes at 400 degrees. It's seriously one of the best quick lunches or snacks or midnight snack. Whatever time of day you choose to have this, it is so delicious. Just make sure that you're really careful when you take it out because it is extremely hot. In the original talk through video, I was telling you guys that it's hard to hold the sandwich up because the cheese was melting down. So it's very gooey, very cheesy. I use a mixture of cheddar for the flavor and then shredded mozzarella for that classic cheese pull. There, I wish you guys could hear the crunch, but I'm basically showing you guys how crunchy the toast got. But I'm just slicing through that grilled cheese. And quick question, are you guys down the middle cutters or diagonal cutters? I really like down the middle, but sometimes I do like cutting my sandwiches into triangles. But there is the grilled cheese in all its glory. I took a bite and it was so delicious. It's that tart sharpness of the Granny Smith apple and even the Dijon mustard that cuts through that rich cheese. It is so, so good. For the next recipe, it is my salted caramel apple crescent rolls. These are so easy to make, but so delicious, and you really could do this with any seasonal fruit. I love doing this with peaches in the summertime, and obviously during fall, we're gonna whip out all of our favorite fall ingredients and make this into a salted caramel bite. So there's the other half of the Granny Smith apple that I used for the grilled cheese. I'm telling you guys, this is the other way you could use that half. And I'm wishing myself luck in opening this, but luckily it kind of just opened on its own. I just unwrapped the two layers and then it popped open. So I uncovered the dough from the tin can and I was able to unroll five pieces. I definitely hacked the living heck out of this. So I probably should have let it defrost a little bit, but I was very excited. I just wanted to show you guys this. So here we go. We got five little triangles out of our tube and we're just putting them off to one side so that we can get the rest of our ingredients ready. So since we have five little triangles, I'm cutting my half of the apple into five little wedges just removing the core first. And I love this because you really don't need that much fruit. So if you have some fruit laying around, like there's always that last piece of apple or pear or something in the fridge. If you have some crescent roll dough or phyllo pastry, you can do this. So I'm just adding some walnuts to this because fall to me just always reminds me of walnuts. So I have to add it. And I really like that crunch. So I'm just showing you guys all the ingredients that we have, our five little triangles, our five slices of apple, and then a little bit of walnut. 
And now it is time to finally assemble our crescent roll. So first I lay down a layer of brown sugar onto each little triangle and then you put some walnuts on top. There's a little close up of the brown sugar and walnuts. So think cinnamon roll meets caramel apple meets crescent rolls. It's seriously the best combination of all of our favorite fall things. So now you add your apple on top of the crescent roll dough. Just put it off onto the top on one corner and kind of press it down because it'll help us when we roll it all together. Next, we're gonna add some salted caramel. This is just pre-made from a jar from Trader Joe's, which is so good. I always have this on hand, especially in the fall. I love just dipping my Granny Smith apples in this, so it's definitely one of my favorite fall treats, but I love using it in a bunch of different desserts, so definitely did not wanna skimp out on the salted caramel here. So I'm just adding about a teaspoon in the center of that triangle right next to the apple, which is gonna be important when we roll it up. So besides the walnuts, they can kind of be along the entire surface area of the triangle, but the apple, the salted caramel, and now the butter, you wanna make sure all of that's in the middle. Now we're gonna add some sea salt. This is the Malden or Maldone sea salt. It's linked in my Amazon storefront, which is linked for you guys down in the description box but this is just really chunky, flaky sea salt. It adds a really nice texture. Obviously we're baking this, so it's just gonna kind of dissolve, but we're gonna add some more on top. So I thought I'd add some in the inside as well because I love when desserts are salty. That sweet salty combination is so delicious. And especially since we have quite a few sweet ingredients here, like the apple is tart, but still sweet. We have the caramel, the brown sugar, and the rich butter and crescent rolls. So we just kind of wanna cut through all of that. And now it's time to roll. So just make sure to grab your corner and roll towards you, making sure that all of your toppings are tucked inside and then set them off to the side with the seam side down. But look how cute they are. They're tiny little crescent rolls. They're going to be so delicious. Granted, I definitely could have made these a lot prettier, but I was too excited, like I said. So if you wanna make these really pretty for a party, just be a lot more patient, like let these defrost a little bit so that you can get your whole can's worth and then just go a little bit, I think, quicker so things aren't melting before they get all ugly. But nonetheless, these are so delicious. And even though these aren't the prettiest little desserts, if you need to make them really nice for a party, for maybe a potluck or any of your guys' upcoming Thanksgiving or Friendsgiving potlucks, then obviously just be a little bit more careful. Maybe be a little quicker as well. Like once you defrost it just at the right amount, a little bit more than me because I ended up kind of messing up and tearing through a bunch of the dough. But like I said, if you need to go to a party, just make sure to defrost it a little bit longer and then work quickly so things don't melt. But I was recording things, so things take a little bit longer. You're just gonna cook this in the air fryer at 400 degrees for up to 10 minutes. I didn't need to cook it as long as I did. They're a little golden brown, but I'm gonna add some salted caramel on top so it's gonna fix everything. So look at how they turned out. They've puffed up slightly. They're slightly crispy on the top and golden brown. I'm just taking a little bit more of that salted caramel and drizzling it over the top to give it a nice sheen and a little bit more flavor because who doesn't like more salted caramel on their desserts? And then lastly, we're gonna sprinkle some of that Malden or Maldone sea salt on top while the caramel is still drying so the salt can stick on to our crescent roll bites. These were the best apple recipes ever. They are so good and I love how easy they are to make. I will have these on the blog already, so make sure to check that out. But I also wanted to show you guys a little bit of what I've been up to lately. Some bridesmaid and dinner prep with some facials. Here I am getting the vampire facial where you get your blood like your actual blood drawn from you and you get your plasma re-injected back into your skin it has a lot of benefits because it's your body and your i don't know antibodies or whatever that they're using so your skin heals a lot better but this is a second day where we're doing more lifting and masks 
so just wanted to show you guys a little bit of the facials that i've been doing and then once i was done with the facial i came back home and i have to admit i did make another apple recipe it was pork chops with apples but something is wrong with my sd card where it's not letting me download the content onto my editing platform so this was the only clip that i can get from that but i've decided i'm still going to upload it to the blog possibly make it into a newsletter post so i will let you guys know on my instagram so please follow me at viv.hanna for updates on this but this was so delicious it's so easy it's just sauteing pork chops and then you saute onions and garlic and apples and you make this sauce with chicken broth let everything cook together with rosemary and it is so delicious but so easy for a weeknight meal as always everything is linked down in the description box so my instagram the reels the blog posts all the fun things so please check that out for more details and thank you guys so much for watching let me know down in the comments what you guys think of this new format whether you like voiceovers or not or if you like when i speak more in real time in the video also, do you like these combined videos where it's like a food video and a vlog put together? Or do you prefer when they were separated? So cook along videos are separate than fashion videos and those are separate than vlogs. So let me know down in the comments section. I'm just trying out different things. And again, this is kind of like a technical issue that I was trying to work with. So bear with me and I appreciate you guys being patient with me while I figure this out. But for the most part, I feel like this video came together quite okay. Again, this pork chop recipe is so delicious. Please follow me on Instagram for more updates on where I shared this because whether it's straight up on the blog or in the newsletter that's going to go out, then it's going to be shared somewhere. I hope this got you into the fall spirit. I can't wait to share more fall things with you guys, so be on the lookout for more fall inspo. But until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye!